Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to do a layout using iDesign. This is the layout that I'm going to teach you how to do using iDesign. So we're in Keynote. I use Keynote on my iPad and that is what I use to create my mood boards, vision boards, scrapbooking, design board, project live pages. I use iDesign for all of that. It's very flexible and it's very easy. You do the same thing over and over again. You just tap and fill. So let me show you what is in iDesign. So here's my iDesign. You have all these sections. Actually, when you first import it to your Keynote on your iPad, this is what it's gonna look like. And you have this little arrow here and you'll twirl that down. And the first thing you're gonna need is a background template. I think I'll go ahead and choose this one. And I don't like to use my masters, so I'll just tap this again, and I'm going to copy it. And then I can close out my templates, and now I'm going to come down to my shapes. And let's see, I'm going to definitely need a square, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that board in here. So I can copy the square and paste it onto my board. And let's see, what else do I need? Oh, I want to get this, this hexagon. So I'll copy and come back over to my board and paste. And then I want this photo, that photo frame. And when you paste on your board, you have to paste or tap your screen somewhere outside the board because there's all elements in here and you won't be able to paste on top of an element. So you've got to find a blank space somewhere around all your masks here to be able to paste. So let's see if there's anything else in here that I want. Oh, I just remembered there was actually something on one of these templates that I wanted. Here it is. So I'm going to copy this, twirl this back up, go back to shapes, and paste this onto my board. And I think I have everything I need. So I'm going to go ahead and this time I want to cut because I don't want to leave that in my eye design. And now my eye design is pretty much left untouched. I'm going to come out and I want to add a new presentation. And then I'm going to tap on the slide in the new presentation up here and paste that board in. So here's my board. And then I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. All right, so here we go. Now, the first thing that I know I don't need are these masks because I'm not doing a project life layout. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all of these. And I want to duplicate this, so I'm going to copy and paste and just kind of put that off to the side. And this is a perfect square, so I am going to resize it till it is the exact length of my board. Because this, I want this to be either an 8x8 eight eight or a 12x12. 12 12. I'll probably end up printing it out on eight and a half by 11 paper. So this will be eight by eight. I'll crop these sidebars off. And all I'm gonna use these sidebars for right now is just to store my shapes. So the first thing I wanna do is fill this shape with a paper. So I just tap on the paintbrush here, make sure image is selected and replace. And that's really all you're going to do for all of these shapes. I think my kit is way, way down here. I keep all my kits on my iPad in my camera or my albums so that no matter where I am in the world, I could be at the doctor's office or at the post office or anywhere that I have some idle time, I go ahead and work on my layouts. All right, so I want, I put this paper in the background and that just filled it perfectly. Yep, when I double tap, you can see that the it goes edge to edge. Of 
course it goes over a little bit, but we don't see that when I tap done. All right, the next shape that I want to work with is this one, and I'm going to make it bigger. If you're having trouble centering, you can turn on your guides just by tapping on the wrench up here. I don't like my guides on because it forces me to put things where I don't want them, but I'm going to just turn on the guide right now so I can center these shapes. And then I'll go ahead and turn them off. I'm going to tap setting, settings and guides, turn on all the guides and then tap settings. And now I'll be able to, it'll just kind of snap to the center. So now I'm going to fill it and I'm actually going to fill this with a solid. I have some solid colors in here and I have a perfect green. Here's my solids and that green looks perfect. Okay so now you can see that this image in the camera roll that I filled this with has this bar across the bottom and that's ugly. So I'm going to double tap on the shape and now I can move this slider over and that removed that black bar. Okay, so now I want to copy and paste. And this one's going to be filled with paper. So I'm going to scroll down to my papers and I'm actually going to use a kit that I have on in my albums that Robin Sampson did. And anything that I use on this layout I will link below. Uh, Robin Sampson has a Etsy store and she creates all kinds of beautiful digital products. And you see how I just resize that? Something else I want to do is put a drop shadow on all of these. So I'm going to go to the paintbrush and this time I want style. I'll go down here to style options and move the slider to turn on the drop shadow. And the shadow that I like the best is actually selected already, so I'm just going to leave it at that. And then I want to do the same thing to this one. Turn it on, and now that has a nice drop shadow. And that just gave it some depth. Let me zoom in so you can see that. Do you see how that just put a subtle drop shadow on there? I want one more paper, or one more of these shapes, so I'm going to copy and paste again. And this one already has a drop shadow on it because I copied a shape that I added the drop shadow already. So all I need to do is go to Image, Replace, and I'm going to go back to the kit that I'm using to fill my shapes. And I think now I want this peach. I'm doing this one just a little bit different than the original. I should probably put the original in here so I can keep referring to it. Let's see, I don't think there's enough of a contrast there, so I'm going to go back to replace and put maybe pink. I think I need pink. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn my guides off now because I'm going to be using my hexagon and I'm going to be making a lot of them, and I don't want the guides on forcing me to put the hexagons where I don't want them. So I need to bring this to the front because I want it on top. So I'm going to tap the paintbrush again and this time I want to arrange and bring it all the way to the front. And Now you can see it's in the front. And what I'll do is add a drop shadow first. So I'll go to Style, Style Options, turn on the drop shadow. And now I'm going to just do Copy and Paste, because I need several of these. Oh, I'm going to resize it first. And now I'll Copy, Paste, 
paste, paste. I don't remember how many I had on my other layout. And I'm probably not going to put as many, just for time's sake. So let me start lining these up. And I'm going to try to just put them all the same distance from each other. There's an undo button, by the way, if you mess up one of your shapes like I just did. Sometimes you unknowingly grab a handle and resize one of your shapes. So the undo button gets used often. Working with your fingers is very different than working with a mouse. All right, so now that I have all those lined up, now I'm going to go ahead and start filling them with some different papers from the same kit. That's the fun of putting little things like that on your layout because then you get to take advantage and add all the papers that are included. Let's see, I think that first one's going to be this red. And then just go ahead and fill the second one. And I'm scrolling really fast so I can get to that kit. Isn't this fun? I have so much fun doing this. It's so easy. And then the finished product just looks that you would never know that you did it on the iPad inside an app that was made for doing presentations in a boardroom meeting. These papers are so pretty. I could look at all of them all day. And this is the one thing that takes the most time, but I actually like it because every time I tap and fill something, it just starts evolving into beauty. It's a little hard to talk and work at the same time. I know that there's a lot of silence while I'm trying to concentrate. Those two look way too close together. I think I'm going to move some of this around. I may end up moving these around again yet. Okay, I like how this looks. I'm just going to go over and peek at the one that I've already done. Notice how I have to go off to the side to paste. I'm going to use one another one of Robin's kits. It's actually a kit that comes with several journaling cards. And 
as you can see, the card filled in with this little banner, side sidebars, and this tag here. So I'm going to double tap, and I'm going to make it bigger so that I can fit just the floral pattern inside there. I like how that looks. Now let me get something else. I'm definitely going to have to rearrange these hexagons. Notice the repetition. You just tap and fill, tap and fill. You'll never forget what you need to do because it's the same thing over and over again. I'll use this one again just to get some green on the top. All right, so let me rearrange these a little bit better. This one is probably going to be partially covered up. Sometimes I just need to zoom in to line those up. All right, that looks good. So now what I want to do is fill my photo. Now I had two photos on my other layout. I'm going to just do one on this layout again for time just to keep this video from being too long. So I'm doing the same thing that I've been doing, tapping and filling, only I'm tapping and filling a different shape. Now again, see how when I move this it goes behind. I want to bring it to the front. So I'm going to tap the paintbrush, arrange, and move the slider all the way to the right. And now my photo is on top. I'll tap the paintbrush again and I'll go to image, replace, and go to my camera roll and fill it with the image. Now I want the image to be more zoomed in, so I'm going to double tap and I'm going to move the slider to the right, center the picture a little bit and say done. And I want to make the photo itself a little bit bigger, tilt it a little bit. And I tilted it just by putting one finger in the center and another finger off off of the photo and I just slid it just ever so slightly to rotate the photo a little bit. Something else I'm going to do is make that frame around it just a little bit thinner. So I've gone to settings. I'm going to hit the border and I'm going to scale the border down by moving the slider to the left and I can see that border getting a little smaller. Yes, I like how that looks much better. Now, I thought I was going to need this square. That's why I copy and pasted it, but I don't. One more thing I'm going to do. I want to show you how to put text in, but I want to go get the speech bubble from my design. And the speech bubble is in the elements. I'm going to copy and paste it onto my layout. 
and I want to fill this with some grid or lined paper. Go to Image, Replace, and I know that one of Robin's journaling cards has some lines or a grid, so I'll just go to that. I also want to make this smaller. And that definitely needs a drop shadow because it just kind of gets lost. Turn on the shadow and use the default. All right, so now let me show you how to do text. You're going to tap on the plus right here and tap text. And it just gives me some generic black text. I'll go ahead and start typing. While Isla was getting her stitches, she was very strong and very brave, and she didn't cry, but her nose was tickling her. So that's what I'm going to put here in the text. I'm not crying. My nose is itchy. And now I want to adjust this text. It definitely needs to be smaller. And I want to also change the color of the text. So rather than this black, I'm going to tap on the black and slide over. I actually want to sample a color that's on the board. So if you slide all the way over to the right, you'll get this tool here for you to tap on the eyedropper tool. And I actually want this red, and it just changed it red. And then I'm going to add some more text because I want to write the word stitches at the bottom. And this will need to be bigger. And I'm going to change the font. and the color. And I just picked a color from the color picker. And I'll put this down here. And I want to change the font here too. I guess the marker. That looks good. One more thing I feel like this layout needs is actually two things I want to put on this layout. And you know what? This is not, is not centered. I actually want to put a polka dot border inside, so I'm just going to tap this and copy and come out here to the side and paste. And this is the one I'm going to put the border around. So now I'm going to go to Style Options, Effects, and I'm going to turn on the border. You have to make sure that border is selected here and you're not in effects. And I'll scroll down to the dot. And I'm going to make the dot bigger. That looks like a good size. And I don't want it to be black. I'm going to make it that red. And this layout will save this red. So I can just tap the red. And of course I need this to be smaller. And I also 
am going to need to send it to the back. So I'll go to Arrange, and I'll just keep sending it to the back till everything is on top of it. All right, now I want to add one more element, and I think I'm going to add one of those flowers from Robin's kit. So this time I'm going to tap on the plus sign, and I'm going to tap Image. And here are all the flowers that come with the kit. And like I said, this is all going to be in the description, all the links to get to everything that's that I've used on this layout. All right, so that's the flower that I want, but I don't want this ugly white background. Here's something else really cool about Keynote. I'm going to tap on the paintbrush. I'm going to go to Image and Instant Alpha. And I'm just going to, with my finger, tap and kind of just move my finger slightly till all the white background is gone. Then you tap Done. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. Once you erase the background from something, it's hard to grab onto unless you grab part of the design. If you try to grab in here, you won't be grabbing it. And I think I want to reflect that also because I want it on the other side. So I'm going to flip horizontally and move it over here. And now my layout is done. I probably need another hex right here because that's a little empty right there. But other than that, my layout's complete. So now to save this to my camera roll, I'm just going to do a screenshot. And in order to do that, I'm going to tap on the on off switch and the home button together at the same time. And then my screen flashes. And that means that it just took a picture of my screen. And now you can either crop it in your camera roll or save it to your computer and crop it on your computer. I hope you enjoyed this video. You learned a lot of things that you can do with Keynote. You saw everything that's included in iDesign. You have everything in there that you could possibly need to do scrapbooking, project life boards, mood boards, design boards, sky's the limit. All you need is your imagination. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.